Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm uh, going live right now from the studio. I want to try out a few things. So for those of you that are about to jump on, maybe you guys can help me out. Uh, that would be helpful. What's up, Burnt Spoon? What's up, Derpy Gold, the Frick? Huh? Uh, can you guys all hear me, number one? I want to know if you guys can hear me because I'm using the lav mic again, and I want to make sure the lav mic is working and that you all can hear me and maybe the sound is less echoey. So I'm relying on you guys to help me out with that. Can hear fine, perfect. All right, so we got the lob going. I'm pretty excited as you can see Solomon's out here hanging out on his piece of cork bark. Uh, he's gonna be making an appearance in this live. We can hang out and chat with him or about him because I have as yet to learn how to communicate uh, you know, one on one with uh, reptiles. Although we can try. Uh, what's up, everybody? How you doing, Kendra Jordan? Thank you for the kind words. Uh, Call of the Wild, what's up? Watching a baby box turtle for the winter, take it inside. I think I'd take a baby box turtle inside for the winter. Um, anyway, uh, let's see, man. Some funny comments already. So it's a good day today. Super duper hot, um, really humid, just the way I love it here in Florida. I thought we'd do a little bit more. Um, you know, I got a couple animals to show you on this live. Uh, and we'll chat about a few things, but first, thanks for joining us and uh, being a part of this experiment that I've been running now for a couple of years, Camp Cannon Channel. We're doing well. We're really excited. Uh, channel's growing, all sorts of cool opportunities coming our way, more plans for the future. Uh, I know you guys have been watching um, the show that we did on Tuesday. Great response from that show. Uh, Kyle is a pretty amazing guy. Uh, and what he's come up with uh, for his new private facility is just incredible, you know? Um, pretty, pretty stoked. That's two pretties. So stoked on what he's building. And then once Kyle's done with the construction at his facility and uh, at his new home, uh, we're going to turn our attention to his former home, which will become uh, Kyle and mine, our new sanctuary. Now, don't be fooled. I know that it's Kyle's generosity uh, that's gonna enable us to have this new place, but Kyle is such a big part of what we do here on the channel. He's certainly a member of this channel uh, in a big way. Um, and, you know, he, you know, it, it is gonna be a collaboration between the both of us, which will be cool. So um, I'm excited about that. Uh, I'll be running the sanctuary and um, we'll have a lot of cool stuff. He's kind of looking for a hole to go in. Uh, we'll have a lot of incredible animals there. I'm going to bring over uh, some of the animals you guys have become uh, uh, fans of, if you will. Slinky, the Galapagos tortoises, Nostradamus. Uh, all the snakes are going to move over there, so I'll be contributing that. Plus, I'll be building enclosures over there. We'll be doing a lot of work, so excited to have that unfold. And don't worry, we are going to do updates of Crocodile Kyle's new facility as well. And what's been happening here in the town we live in you know, uh, the way it's set up, three miles in one direction is Kyle's old facility, which will be the new sanctuary. And in three miles, the other direction is Kyle's new home and facility. So we've got this really cool triangle, the reptilian triangle, which uh, is kind of going to become a, a term I use here on the uh, podcast or on the show from time to time. So get ready for that. Uh, beyond that, really excited. Uh, so many of you guys are wondering what does Kyle do? What does Kyle do to be able to afford that? I think it's so funny. Like there's so many people asking that question. And it's a good and reasonable question. Uh, but Kyle is uh, a business, a businessman. He also uh, comes from a fantastic business, uh, the Asplund family. They trim trees, so he's got the good fortune of that as well. But it's his uh, philanthropy that is really astounding. It's what he does with uh, everything. He loves the crocodiles, loves reptiles. So he's really um, somebody that those animals need on their side. And uh, super stoked that uh, he moved like three miles from me and we became such good friends. Let's turn over here to some of the questions. Exotic exhibits uh, donated $2 to the channel. Thank you. Uh, my wife and I are, are looking at wedding photos and you're live. Well, there you go. I'm glad I can be a part of uh, some good memories and maybe we'll make some new ones here today. So I don't know how long you've been married, but congratulations uh, on being married, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful life together 
And I hope that you're strolling down memory lane and it's just all rainbows and um, unicorns. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for your generous donation as well. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? Uh, everyone also asked, Britt Lyons asked, does Kyle have a YouTube? No, he doesn't. Um, Kyle is part of this family. Uh, he's, his YouTube channel is our YouTube channel. If he ever wanted to start one of his own, he can do that. Um, but at this point in Kyle's life, he is extremely busy with all the different businesses that he is currently um, involved in. Uh, and it's going to get that much more busy as the weeks and months and year progresses. Uh, Kyle and I are going to be working very closely on this new sanctuary. And Camp Kennan uh, will document that. So um, we're going to set it up as two separate entities. You're going to have Camp Kennan, which is our media division. And it's all the educational videos and so on. And then you'll have the as yet not releasable name of the uh, sanctuary, which will be a non-profit sanctuary. And our goal is education. Uh, public will be able to come view through guided tours. We're going to be working with different zoological institutions to provide homes and assurance colonies for different animals uh, that are currently endangered or threatened. And then uh, finally, uh, we will also have uh, different events uh, there, whether it's an event like CropFest or uh, some other event that we have yet to devise. We'll be doing events at the sanctuary. But the first goal is to get it up and running, get all the uh, permits up and running, get all the documentation with the government going, and then we'll have a real proper announcement for the whole thing. But these things take time uh, when dealing with uh, the IRS and businesses and so on. So bear with us. Uh, it's a learning experience for me, but the good news is that we're both very passionate about it and we know you guys will be passionate too. Uh, that was part of the reason why Kyle and I decided uh, to go this route. We think it's a natural progression for our love of animals. Um, so what's been happening is basically um, we want to take it further. We want to go further than our backyard. We want to have more of an impact on these animals' lives and your lives, a uh, place where you guys can come hang out and check it out as well. Uh, turning back to the comments, Alyssa uh, Finolio says, I have two turtles, one's named Jeffrey, and she's a girl. Funny story. When I was a uh, six-year-old boy, my father, who's currently out sitting by the pond, got me my first turtle. It was a red-eared slider, and I named it Tom the Turtle. Uh, but as I grew up and learned more about turtles, I realized Tom was a girl. So uh, Tom became a gal. Uh, so there you go. Uh, we called her, uh, I think I called her Tomasita. I don't know. But anyway, there you go. Uh, let's see. In the meantime, let's move along here on the live, man. And we'll, uh, we'll get to, to some more of your questions. But let's see if we can get Solomon to come back out and make an appearance here for everybody. Uh, he was hiding out. I did bring some hibiscus out. Maybe he's in the mood. To eat some, I'm not 100% sure. Now, I bring the cork bark because his, his crazy little claws are so insanely um, sharp that, I don't know, man, I'm a little bit of a sissy these days. I just don't want to deal with the, um, with the, the, the getting bitten. You want to eat this, buddy? Come on. Oh, yeah. See, Solomon's not afraid. So we got some hibiscus growing. He's going to eat some of that. So I think you guys are able to see this right now. So let's turn our attention to Solomon. And if you guys have any questions about these lizards, I'll go ahead and try and answer them for you. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I love Solomon. I also have another one. Unfortunately, um, one of the two new monkey tail skinks passed away a few months back. I think it was the stress of being moved in and out. And they had to stay inside for pretty much um, like I had gotten them from Tom Crutchfield. And then I had to put them inside. And I think just the stress of being in a new cage might have stressed her out uh, if it was indeed the female. It's very difficult to tell the sex between these two, but Tom did give me a little tutelage on that. Uh, I'm going to turn the computer here, see what we got going on. Well, well, Amanda Preston, hello, my first live show. I caught on time. Well, there you go. Welcome. You just got a comment read. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, let's see, man. Uh, okay, so we got some questions. How big do they get, Jason? Uh, Tudbury. Well, Jason, this lizard is just about a foot and a half long. Uh, this is a fairly larger monkey tail. Um, Solomon is a good representation of a large lizard. Let's see if I can chase him out. Now, the thing with Solomon is he, he can bite. Monkey tails, although they are um, 
herbivores, they do have a pretty darn good bite, and it's one you do not want to feel. Let's see if I could get him out here. He's just swallowing the rest of his meal. I'll try and turn this so you guys can see. Maybe I can lure him out so you can see his size. But in the meantime, we'll just continue with other questions. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, how much do these guys cost? Well, if you can still find them, which is more and more uh, difficult to do in captivity in the 90s, these animals were uh, imported in great number. Uh, but of course, um, their native range, um, they became uh, quite rare. So they stopped the importation on these lizards. Um, and that's good. We have enough in, in the country to where uh, we can sustain, you know, the captive hobby um, and zoos. Zoos breed these. Uh, there are a few different people that breed them. The thing is with breeding these animals, they'll maybe have one live birth a year. Uh, very rarely they'll have um, twins. Uh, but what's cool about monkey tails, and I will answer your question about how much they cost. Uh, for a monkey tail, you're probably looking at about 1500 bucks. Um, I'm not sure, you know, that that's probably an unsexed, uh, animal, uh, females will run a little bit higher, probably around two grand, but you can find deals still. Um, I was just at the Repticon in Tampa and they had some females for 1200, which is a darn good price over there at aquatics and exotics. Um, really good price for those animals. Um, so there you go. Um, I tend to not buy things anymore these days, I'm focusing mostly on the animals I have, breeding them, and then animals uh, that I acquire uh, that need homes. So that's the price, around 15, 2,000 bucks. Uh, every once in a while you get cheaper. But now going on to a little bit more of their life history, man, we've done videos about these guys before. They give birth to live young, usually one uh, at a time. But uh, you know what happens is, the cool thing about this species is the adults and the babies will live together in a family unit. And they live in this family unit. They stay with each other for quite some time after being born, uh, which is not something that you really hear of much uh, with reptiles. Uh, crocodilians will rear their young to a certain age. Um, but these guys really do form close-knit family groups. And they don't like interlopers or outsiders, which is why it can be difficult to introduce male and females together in captivity had they not been living together for quite some time. Uh, they can be pretty aggressive towards newcomers, so you really have to watch it. Uh, that's something that's very important. Uh, we did get another donation from Chris Brandt, uh, about to go ride the giant glory. Whoa, what's up? Before my partial knee replacement Tuesday, thanks for all the knowledge and content you produce. I'll be following while I'm laid up for a couple of months. Chris, man. I feel for you, brother. I got a PCL tear that I never had fixed because, you know, it just makes the quad strong and your PCL is fine. But um, I, I am excited because I'm going to be heading up to New Jersey at the end of July and I'm bringing my rain, uh, which is uh, a nice little all mountain free ride bike. Uh, I did have a glory and I rode it up in Vancouver or rather at Whistler. Great bike. Enjoy that ride. Lots of travel on the suspension. That's the one thing I miss, Chris is I just don't get enough mountains here in South Florida. Uh, there are a few places to ride, but the problem is the bike I have, man, it's too much bike for where I live. I need like an Anthem or maybe a Trance, and I think I'll be set up for some cool cross-country rides. I'd love to do some cross-country rides and have my uh, GoPro on, and I can do like a whole story of herping on bike, uh, on bike back, if that make, makes any sense. But it's fun to go herping on a mountain bike because you really can sneak up on the animals because they don't hear or feel the vibrations as much as when a car's coming. So good for you. I hope you heal up well and uh, get back on that glory, brother. We also have someone else who donated, uh, Jose Duran. Can Eastern and Chinese box turtles survive year-round outdoors in New York? Well, funny you ask that. In Staten Island, there's a, a gentleman by the name of Ray Farrell, and he housed his Chinese box turtles outside all year. Now, I... I they do hibernate in the wild, but you have to make sure they're the ones from the mainland of China, not the Taiwanese ones. Um, those are more hardy, and they will take cooler temps and go into a hibernation. Uh, here in Florida, we don't have nearly as cold weather as we do up there in New York. Uh, I keep mine outdoors, rain, shine, cold, whatever, uh, and I've had no issues. Um, that being said, if you do not have the proper habitat set up for them while they are outside, in other words, you've got to have a lot of leaf litter, uh, deep soil, 
that the freeze will not penetrate. So keep that in mind. And let's not forget, guys, even though animals can hibernate, hibernation is a very stressful time for any animal. That's why only the strong survive. Here comes Solomon peeking out. So yeah, what I'm trying to say is, even though an animal is from an area that hibernates, there are mortalities in the wild um, for animals that are uh, that didn't survive hibernation. It's just another uh, another one of nature's checks and balances. Uh, we all know survival of the fittest. Okay, so very good. Let's head back down to the bottom of the comments and see what else is going on. Uh, Colton Dogherty says, "Hi, Kenan. Big fan of what you're doing. You're 18. Came from riding BMX into rescuing reptiles, and I'll also be breeding." Uh, some going into the 2019 season. Well, right on, dude. Stoked to hear so many BMXers are out there and bike riders uh, coming on out and doing your thing. Really pumped to have you guys uh, joining the channel, man. Don't get on the BMX too much anymore. We do have a cool skate park here in Jupiter, the Abacoa Skate Park. I will roll around there from time to time when some of my other BMX buddies show up. But I'm not about getting wounded anymore. I'm about staying in shape and uh, being able to keep taking care of these animals. And trust me, in 2019, I'm going to have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of projects that are on the burner for that year. So I uh, can't wait to show it to you guys. Uh, so we're going to put Solomon down right now. I'm going to go ahead and put him down. I'm going to pull out um, Ethel. You guys know Ethel, right? Uh, let's see, where should I put Solly? Uh, well, we'll keep Solomon right over here. I think that'll work. Go ahead, Sol. Just relax. If I give him some more hibiscus, I think he'll be happy. But I got to tell you guys, Ethel the diamond python is so gorgeous. She has just shed, so I wanted to show her off while we're all hanging out. She is gorge, man. Look at her. I had her out. Um, I did some Instagram posts with her yesterday. Uh, if you haven't followed my Instagram, please go check it out, Camp Kennan, uh, on Instagram. I also started one of those new Instagram TV channels. I haven't uploaded anything yet, but uh, definitely we'll do some longer form video on Instagram as well. Uh, usually things that are happening in between when we are filming for Camp Kennan. So be on the lookout for that as well. But how about this girl? She is gorgeous. She's very well behaved. 20 year old snake, uh, Morelia spilota, spilota, the nominant species. This is just a gorgeous uh, animal. Really, really pleased that I got her. Um, just probably the prettiest snake I've seen. I love them. I, I just like the natural colorations. Um, they get the name diamond python, obviously, from this coloration. Uh, but we were talking a little bit about Chinese box turtles being able to hibernate. Uh, these guys hibernate in the wild in Australia. And my good buddies, uh, Peter Birch and Colin Schumark, come across these guys where they live down near Sydney all the time. So how cool is that to find pythons where you live? I know those of us in the States would be super stoked if that were to happen. Uh, but if you live in Africa, Asia, or in Australia, that's basically like finding a garter snake or a racer or a corn snake. Uh, and they get excited about seeing those snakes here. So it's really cool to be able to have one of these animals here in the States. Um, I love her. She's nice and warm. She's been really just basking. When I went and got her out of her enclosure, she's still with Colin. They were basking next to each other. And because of this black coloration, that really helps them in their natural habitat when it's cold out to absorb as much energy from the sun as possible so they can warm their bodies up. Uh, let's see what kind of questions we got. What do we got? Uh, okay, 20 years old. Donna Kate Morgan says they're 20 years old. How long do they live? And I just posted on Facebook. Um, I wasn't entirely sure of their age, and my buddy Tom Crutchfield has worked with this species for a number of years. Uh, he tells me about 30 years in captivity. So if we're lucky, we get 10 more years with Ethel. Uh, and if we're really lucky, maybe she'll live uh, even longer. So in captivity, things are a bit different. Probably, um, you know, 15 years in the wild, 10, 15 years is going to be a pretty good life in the wild. But as I mentioned earlier with the uh, Chinese box turtles and the hibernation, we got to remember the wild is the best, right? But you got to also understand that Living in the wild is uh, taxing on an organism. It's survival of the fittest, and that's part of the reason human beings have been so successful, is we've figured out how in some ways to tame our environment. Now, we haven't done that perfectly, as you well know. Uh, every once in a while, we get our butts handed to us with a drought, hurricane, earthquake, or as what's happening in Hawaii, 
uh, volcanoes. But by and large, we've been very successful and we've increased our age. Uh, if you consider us being domesticated or in captivity, captivity, uh, we live longer. Now, animals, as we become more uh, astute and more informed on how these animals behave and how we can properly care for them, uh, we're finding out that they have um, been stretching their age limits themselves. So that's a cool thing. Uh, only if you're doing it the right way. We don't want to keep tons of animals in captivity just for the sake of having a collection. We want to keep them because we're truly fascinated and stoked on them, and that's what we're doing right now. Uh, turn it back to some questions, man. We are wrapping. Uh, yes, Kevin Taylor, Ethel and Colin can breed. They're actually the same species. And uh, in one of my videos, I, you know, sometimes when you're talking, uh, you talk fast and you may not always get the information out the way you want to. Uh, so I did mention like that Colin and her were different species. That's not true. They're actually different subspecies. Uh, so they can breed um, and they can have offspring. Uh, their offspring do occur naturally in the wild where their ranges overlap. Uh, so in the northern part of the diamond python range, they'll meet with the southern population of carpet pythons and they'll go ahead and have natural intergrades. Uh, those intergrades are fine. And, you know, this is probably what happens to create new species or new subspecies of snakes uh, that exist in the wild. She's really holding on. She's got me all palsied up here on my hand. Uh, she's holding on to me quite well because she knows she's up in the air. Uh, some people that are not accustomed to snakes or constrictors in general uh, would think, oh God, she's squeezing me, but she's only squeezing, but she's trying to hold on. Let's go back to some more questions, everybody. Uh, we got a lot of questions. I'm sorry I'm not getting to them all, everybody. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. What's a good one? Um, let's see, can I please get a shout out to be amazing? X Mason, the Gamer X 99. There you go, buddy. Any tips on desert iguanas, uh, Walker Jenkins? Yeah, I don't really know too much. Um, when I lived in Las Vegas, I would often go out and look for desert iguanas. They love to live in the creosote bush. Uh, they like the climate where the temperatures are less grueling than on the surface of the desert. Uh, they can take extremely, extremely high dry temperatures. So if you can't reproduce, like I'm talking basking temperatures of about 120 degrees, these guys are chilling. They don't care. So they can take really high temperatures, desert iguanas, but they were often some of my favorite iguanas. I, I really love desert iguanas. They're fast, they're pretty, uh, and they're very interesting lizards. Um, that's about all I know. They're eating different uh, weeds and grasses uh, and leaves that grow in the desert. So they're, they're true survivors, but you gotta keep them warm, uh, extremely warm, and they do require some space to move around. That's about as much as I can give you. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, if there anything else, uh, if there's anything else going on. Um, oh, hello. Don't please don't knock that. I do not play uh, Fortnite, the last Kryptonian. I just don't listen with the YouTube channel and Instagram and my telephone in general. Let me tell you, if I started playing video games, I would get nothing done and Kate would disown me because I'm always on the phone answering emails or uh, comments and checking things out. Um, so I like to give myself time with the animals. I'm more interested in being outside and being with the animals. Um, that being said, if you guys want to have a laugh, uh, Google Dave Mira Pro Freestyle BMX 1 and 2. I'm actually a video game character from the way back. Uh, that was kind of fun. They scanned my face and they put me in a video game. So you can still find on YouTube, I think, some, uh, some demo versions of people playing uh, Dave Mira Pro Freestyle BMX, where I'm actually a character in the video game. Uh, but I never played the video game. The only video games I enjoy playing are either ones where I'm flying a, uh, some kind of fighter jet, because no one's going to let me behind the wheels or behind the stick of a uh, $30 million jet airplane. Uh, so I can't do that necessarily in real life. Uh, then, of course, I love the Arkham games, Batman games, because I'm not a billionaire. And I'm not a vigilante, so I'm not going to be able to do that. But, you know, I can kind of go into that fantasy world of Batman. And that's about it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't played my video games in a while. I have a PlayStation 2. I never play it. It's a glorified DVD player when I watch DVDs, if I even do that anymore. Uh, what other questions? Uh, do you prefer monkey tail skinks over the blue tongue skinks? Ella, 
uh, Domadon. Domadon? I believe that's how you say it. I do. I do. Um, only because I enjoy... Is he still in there? Good, he's still in there. I, I, it's because I enjoy animals um, that move through the trees. I think it's interesting. I love to see them climbing around. They really do make use of that prehensile tail. Um, you know, it's really fun to watch that. Same thing with the carpet pythons. Why I enjoy them is they're semi-arboreal. So I could find them on the ground or I can look up and see them in their enclosure. And I like that. I think it's just interesting, more interesting for me to see a snake moving through the trees or a lizard moving through the trees. I've always been enamored by that. I'm drawn to that. I'm a bit of a nerd and I still like to climb trees. Uh, so I got a ficus tree out back that I'll bring the snakes up into and I'll just hang out in the tree with them and let them do their thing. That'd be a fun video. Maybe I'll do that on Instagram uh, next week or something, just hanging out with maybe Colin up in the tree. I think we'll like that. Uh, all right, man, they can go months. Yeah, reefs to morphs hunt. They can go months as long as no weight loss is occurring. Right, you know, this species in particular will hibernate. So uh, snakes, if they're being fed a decent sized meal at every feeding, if they go off feed for a few months, as long as you're not seeing a dramatic amount of weight loss, uh, the snakes, that's one of their survival uh, specialities, is being able to do that. Um, sometimes I wish all I needed to do was eat one big meal and I'm good for like a month. I think that I could get much more accomplished. It seems like I love to eat and I just go, I finish breakfast and I'm already looking forward to lunch. Finish lunch and I'm already looking forward to dinner. I never get anything done. Uh, I'm always eating. Anyway, uh, what else do we got here? Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Uh, I think that's it, man. I don't know. How many species of tortoises do I have? Good question. I really don't know. Probably like 25, 26 different species. I don't know. Um, I'll get back to you on that. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, have I ever considered getting a leopard gecko? Jesse ha Hajik. No. Um, I, I, um, I love them. They're reptiles. I love them. I tend to shy away from most reptiles that I have to feed insects to because... I'd want to raise insects and living here in Florida, very difficult to raise crickets. They all die. Then when I order them, half of the thousand are already dead. Um, and then, you know, it's just, it's a little bit more of a pain in the neck. And I don't want to spend hours harvesting uh, crickets or insects from outside. Um, you know, I ha because of the channel, I have to work with animals that fit into my lifestyle, right? So they fit into my day to day. Uh, the tortoises eat grass. I uh, feed them a few times a week, clean their water. The snakes, you feed them a few times. The lizards, you, you feed them uh, maybe three to four times a week, and everyone gets along. Same thing with good old Slinky. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty rad, man. Uh, I just, you know, for them, for the geckos, um, I, I love them. I, I know people who work with them. They're fascinating. Um, but uh, that's just not something that I do. You know, it's kind of funny, guys. Um, I really, um, you got to remember, uh, here's, here's kind of the thing. Like when you look at my channel, um, I tend to focus on animals outdoors. And I want to try and change that because I realize a lot of you guys uh, live up north. Now, I'm like those of you that live up north. I grew up up north. It was my dream to move down here in Florida. So I've realized my dream of living in Florida and keeping my animals outdoors. Um, but we, we, I got to remember, and I got to visit some folks up north that are doing really cool things with their animals because most of you want to know how do I keep these animals healthy in captivity up north. Uh, and I like to see that many of you are choosing species that stay small. I've kind of uh, graduated in my life to moving down south. And so I want to keep animals that I can keep outdoors. I just think it's fun. Um, not that I don't like smaller animals, I would want to keep them outdoors too, but with the leopard geckos and some of that, it can be challenging to do that outside. Uh, plus they like, they're nocturnal and they want to stay uh, in small hides and so on like that. Look at her though, she's beautiful. She's very content to just wrap up here. Uh, all right, man. Um, oh yeah, there was one more thing I wanted to get to today. Um, and that's just to let you know, the baby sulcatas that hatched out will be ready to ship on Monday as promised. Here's some of the baby sullies. So if you ordered a tortoise from me, do not freak out. They are coming to you Monday. So here are the babies. They're eating, they're moving around, they're making a bunch of noise in their enclosure. Um, really stoked. And if you have not yet ordered a baby sulcata tortoise, um, I have plenty of baby sulcata tortoises available. They're $80 plus shipping. Uh, shipping east of the Mississippi is $60. 
and west of the Mississippi, it's seventy dollars, um, and that's shipping and handling. Uh, so that's me giving you a great insulated box, uh, next day air, and a guaranteed healthy animal. So I'm um, excited. I'll be shipping out those babies that have been ordered, and quite a few have been ordered. But we do have some left, and there's more hatching. I'm going to put her back in this little box. Why don't we see what's going on in the incubator? Uh, if I can get her off of me. Oh, my God. She's really holding on. Give me one second. All right. She's off. Let's put her away, and then I'll get her back out in her house. Let me see what's happening in the incubator, everybody. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh boy, yeah, we got some baby red foots. Oh, and we got some more sullies. Let's see. All right, guys, I'm coming back. Don't worry. Don't fear. I will return momentarily. All right, I'm back. Uh, so yeah, man. Or yeah, yeah, man, girls, boys, and women, whoever are watching. Uh, here are some baby sulcatas. These guys are ready to go into their new nursery. Their yolk sacs have been absorbed nicely. I like to wait until it gets a little bit more absorbed before I ship these. So here they are, some baby sulcatas. They're $80 plus the shipping. If you're interested in the tortoise, uh, please email me at campkennan at gmail.com with the heading sulcata tortoise. And then please, when I respond, follow the instructions I give you to order, all right? I need specific information in order for me to make sure this tortoise goes to you properly. Um, so yeah, so there's some more. Look at this. Here's another guy. This guy's, he's not quite ready to go into the nursery. You see, it's still a little soft there. I don't want him to hurt himself. So I'm going to keep him in here. This guy's got to stay, but this one's ready. And this one's ready. So you can see it's firmed up a bit and there's nothing that, you know, they won't be poked. And, in the nursery, they'll be fine. So I'm going to put these two little ones in. Real nice, light babies I get. So if you're interested, please email me at campkennan at gmail.com. All right, let's put these guys aside and see what's going on with these little red footers. Ah, look out. Woo. These guys still need to hang out. Look, guys, I am getting really beautiful red foots. These are these crazy leg red foots, really light, uh, incredibly red forelegs. Look at this. Is that awesome or what? Uh, this one is much lighter than this guy. So these guys need a little bit longer. I want it, that to flatten out a little bit more. So I'm going to keep them inside this humid uh, nest box or incubation box. And that, that humidity, when they're young, is what really helps these guys out. So that's what's happening here at Camp Kennan. Let me put these guys away, answer a couple more questions, and then we will get moving because I do have to go film a few things today. And so I'll be able to do that. I'm just having a peek, see if there's anything else interesting that I can show you guys and gals and nothing, nothing else hatching. All right, we're going to shut that up. I'm going to come on back over here and uh, we can finish up this live. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Tried to bring out some animals for you. I tried to answer some questions uh, and so be it. Let's see. Uh, Connor, any tips on making my do-it-yourself indoor turtle pond? My turtles are getting kind of big for a tank now, and I want to move them into a pond I can make myself. Well, yeah, definitely check out the pond build we did here. Um, you know, there's plenty of ideas. Google is your friend as well. Um, but, you know, you want to uh, make sure whatever you create um, is large enough to facilitate them, but not too big that, you know, you're going to have humidity problems indoors. Uh, that could be a problem. You may want to put a cover on the pond somehow. Uh, that's something you need to think about, uh, the space. It's about without seeing uh, where you intend to do it, um, that might be uh, a little tough. Also, you can try purchasing one of those Rubbermaid, big Rubbermaid cattle troughs. Uh, get some great filtration for that large filter. And that would be a pretty good habitat for your animals too. Uh, let's see, how to keep the humidity up in an indoor redfoot tortoise enclosure, Amber Hill asks. Well, Amber, I like to, if you can't do, uh, you know, you like airflow, that's good. But if you have a screen top, you can cover half of it. Also, um, I just mist more often. There are all kinds of automatic foggers and misters on the market that come in handy. Um, you don't want to get too wet, but those foggers can be good. Also, there, is, there are these little misters I had years ago. One was called a Mr. Mister, but I know ZooMed makes a misting system. You could fill up, put it on timer. It'll spray for like 
you know, you can do it for a minute, it'll moisten the soil. Um, also soil um, that you use will, depending on that, it may hold humidity better. I like organic potting soil, and then I put a cover of repti bark on top, and then I also put some of uh, <clears throat> some sphagnum moss and keep that moist. That helps the humidity up. All right, let's see. Walker Jennings, I follow you on Instagram. You're awesome. Thank you very much. I'm in Florida right now. I wish I could meet you. Hey, man, if we get this sanctuary up and running, when we get the sanctuary up and running, you'll be able to book a tour, uh, help us out with the sanctuary, and you'll get to meet me. So I think that'll be a win-win for the animals and all of us get a chance to meet each other in person. I'm um, going to be traveling around this summer. I'm uh, going to be heading to California in the beginning of July. I'll be in SoCal. So if you're out in SoCal, I don't know, maybe meet up at Prehistoric Pets. I don't know. I'm going to go visit Jay out there and do a bunch of different videos. Uh, all right, man. Well, listen, I think we've been talking uh, quite some time. Not sure how long, but uh, I know it's been over a half an hour. So I just want to say thanks again for all your support, everybody. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, more to come. Don't forget, if you like the videos, go to Camp Kennan, uh, the good old channel. You can hit thumbs up. You can like a video. You can dislike a video. doesn't break my heart. I'm a big boy. Uh, but you could subscribe as well. Even if you hate me, subscribe. Because uh, maybe I'll annoy you with the next video and you just love to hate me. So that's good. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. Go to patreon.com slash Camp Kennan. If you guys want to become a Patreon supporter for some more content and uh, different fun events that go on from time to time, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Camp Cannon Army channel. All right, everyone, thanks so much for joining in on the live. Uh, as this evolves, we'll be doing more on the lives. Um, I want to get like more podcasty with these from time to time, and uh, we'll discuss many things. Thank you, and I'll talk to you all soon. Later. <laughs>